As hesitant as I was back in 2014 when the storm clouds were hovering over 345 Park Avenue and people were openly calling for a change of commissioner, it's hard for me not to tie this current reality to the man who's been the commissioner since August of 2006, that he is in the ultimate act of self-preservation, doing exactly what the oligarchs who own these teams and who run the league want him to do, maximizing revenue. He has a stated goal of getting the league to $25 billion per year. He had a stated goal in the early 1980s to become the commissioner of the NFL, and he succeeded. His stated goal as of 15 years ago, or maybe 13 or 12, it's at some point during his tenure, to get to $25 billion per year. That's his goal, and this is a guy who is goal-oriented and is very good at reaching his goals. So, Peter, I think that everything we're seeing now is basically the chickens coming home to roost, that the, the seeds for this were planted a long time ago. And when Mark Cuban said eight years ago, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered, I think that I assumed he was talking about the fans eventually being turned off. It's too much. It's too much. There's too much football. Thursday night. And now, you know, maybe Tuesday and Wednesday night because we found a way to pull it off during the pandemic and 17-game regular season, soon to be 18-game regular season. It's too much. The fans are going to get turned off. I think the hog gets slaughtered by the fact that others in government, legislative and prosecutorial, are looking at this behemoth that the NFL is becoming and saying, as the epigraph to The Godfather reads, behind every great fortune there is a crime. Or as the case may be, in front of every great fortune there is a crime. All around every great fortune there are crimes, and now they're looking for them. And I'm not saying there are crimes. I'm not saying there are crimes. We're just talking about moral compass here. It's for others to decide whether or not laws were broken. But I think what we're seeing, this critical mass that's kind of been reached after I locked the manuscript of Playmakers. I mean, it took 20 years for me to write Playmakers. I could write Playmakers 2 in two years, given everything that's gone on. This is something that didn't just happen. This is the product of something that's been simmering for 15 years. That's my take. Do you, do you want to join me in speculating on the fact that all these problems trace to the man whose name is on the football? <laughs> And with that, I, mean, I say farewell they, forever. Goodbye. They do. No, they do recently. You know, they do recently because Roger Goodell could have done something about uh, the the oral report uh, or the verbal report with um, you know with the Washington Football Team. He could have done something about that and made it a written report, like he did with Brady and Ray Rice. Um, but he didn't, and. Why didn't me, he do it? I think he could. Why didn't said, he do it? It's Mike. I'm not sure this is a 15 year scheme. I, I, you know, but I do think I do think. And 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 by the way, and by the way, you know, we've talked about this before, but I just want to reiterate it one last time because I'm not picking on Daniel Snyder. I'm simply stating a fact. And the fact is, when I started covering the NFL in the 80s, my favorite day always was walking the last quarter mile or whatever to RFK Stadium and watching a football game there and five times during the course of the game, feeling like the stadium is shaking like it was in an earthquake. Because that old barn uh, shook when the crowd went crazy. And it was an event. It was a happening. It was so great. That is what happened. That's what, that's what the Washington football experience was. And now we're at the point where the Washington football experience is a boatload of empty seats, more fans rooting for the visiting team than home team, and a whole... Uh, you know, generation, new generation of fans who do not care about a team that just a generation ago was one of the five flagship franchises of the NFL. And it's a disgrace. The whole thing is a disgrace. And for a lot of different reasons, you know, the, the, the thing that the league should be most concerned with 
however they do it, is to try to get or to force Daniel Snyder to sell this team because he's a horse crap owner. And not only on the field, but off the field. And until he's out, you're not going to see any real progress in refurbishing the name and the franchise of the Washington football team. But he was protected by the commissioner who did not apply any transparency whatsoever to the Beth Wilkinson investigation because the commissioner specifically did not ask for a written report because if he had asked for a written report, as we reported weeks ago, the written report would have included a recommendation that Daniel Snyder be required to sell the team. That would have been the bottom line from Beth Wilkinson. I think, Peter, after processing this since July 2nd of last year, talking to different people about it, this is very simple. By protecting Daniel Snyder, the commissioner protected the other owners, and that is who he is there to protect. That is who he is there to serve. I remember during the lockout in 2011, I was getting ready to interview the commissioner on this program when it was digital only on NBCSports.com, and somebody from the league office was trying to preposition me on talking points and whatnot. I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, But one of the arguments made was, now remember, he's the commissioner for all constituencies of football from the highest level to the lowest level. The owners, the coaches, the players, the fans, the media, yada, 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 frickin' yada. And my reaction was, well, he's only got one constituency, doesn't he? The 32 owners that hired him, the 32 owners that retain him, the 32 owners that pay him and pay him and pay him and look, in addition to the $25 billion per year that he aspires the NFL to generate. He may have his own little personal aspiration of how much money he wants to eventually have in the bank, and it's worked. He has done his job well if his job is to do the bidding of the oligarchs who own the team. And again, where do you strike that balance? Who's in place to tell the owners the hard truths? What happened to Faye Vincent when he tried to do that in baseball? See, I know a little about baseball, Peter King. I know opening day was yesterday, and I know they pushed out Faye Vincent because he told him things they didn't want to hear. You tell these really rich people things they don't want to hear, they're going to find somebody else to be the one who tells them what they want to hear. So, again, I didn't intend... This isn't on the you know, Mike, hey, Mike. We're Mike, freelancing Mike, here, Mike. but, but th- I think we may be touching on something. Mike, I will just ask you this question. If you you know, gave sodium pentothal to 31 other owners and took a, a, a closed vote and asked the question, how many of you would like to have a new owner of the Washington football franchise? I bet pretty sure, I bet pretty clearly that there would be a majority that would say yes, if only out of, uh, out of, we're being hamstrung in one of the hottest pro football markets in the United States. We are being prevented from making the anywhere near the amount of money we could make, even if it's for that reason, having nothing to do with the morals of it. But but that is why, you know, when you when you talk about that, and I get it, and I get tying it all to Goodell, and and I'm 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 somewhat on your side in this, but I just think morally more than anything else, that's where there needs to be a reckoning right now in the NFL. Uh, and, and you have to say, what, what do we stand for, really? You know, what, what do we stand for? Okay, we'll put up with people on the halftime show. Or, you know, I'm joking, obviously. You know, but, but really, what do we stand for here? And, and I think that is what's lacking in the NFL right now. I predict that one or both of Daniel Snyder and Steven Ross are going to get pushed out because this is an effort to try to, number one, placate the people who are becoming more and more intent on seeing real change happen in the NFL and also to try to apply some guardrails to the rest of the owners. That we may be at a point where not even the league office can control what the owners are doing. Some of them, some of them, not all of them but some of them. If the allegations regarding Ross and Snyder are true, then they deserve the scrutiny. But 
maybe they need to begin to rebuild some semblance of a moral compass, at least create the impression that they have one somewhere in the back of a drawer. But one way to do that is to dump a couple of these owners and try to scare the other ones who need to be scared straight to scare them straight. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.